Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss a very important case on lipid chemistry that is neonatal respiratory distress syndrome which is also called as infant respiratory distress syndrome or hyaline membrane disease. Let's begin with a case study. A diabetic mother delivered a premature baby at 34th weeks of gestation with clinical features of rapid breathing with grunting sounds, blue colored fingers, flaring of alanazai, retraction of ribs and sternum. X-ray chest revealed prominent bronchial air shadows and generalized opacity. Arterial blood gas analysis confirmed hypoxia and retention of carbon dioxide. Amniotic fluid analysis done before delivery showed low lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio. So this is the case of premature baby of a diabetic mother and the baby is presenting with symptoms of respiratory distress that is baby is having difficulty in breathing. X-ray chest finding and ABG analysis also confirms the inadequate oxygen and respiratory distress. Amniotic fluid analysis with low lecithin to sphingomyelin ratio all these findings are pointing towards the diagnosis of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome. What is neonatal respiratory distress syndrome? It is a breathing disorder affecting premature infants due to failure in pulmonary surfactant production. Why it is common in premature infants? Because their immature lungs are not able to synthesize enough surfactant. What is surfactant? It is a liquid that is composed of dipalmitoyl lecithin in combination with specific proteins and other phospholipids like phosphatidylglycerol and phosphatidyl inositol. But dipalmitoyl lecithin is major constituent of surfactant and it is very effective surface active agent. This surfactant is found in the extracellular fluid and surrounds the alveoli of lungs where it decreases surface tension of the fluid to pre prevent lung collapse during breathing. And this surfactant it is secreted by type 2 pulmonary epithelial cells and it prevents adhesion of inner surfaces of the lungs. Without enough surfactant, the lungs collapse and the newborn has to work hard to breathe. He or she may not be able to breathe in enough oxygen to support body's organ in absence of surfactant. So most babies who develop RDS, they show signs of breathing problem and a lack of oxygen at birth or within few hours after the birth. And the lack of oxygen can damage baby's brain and other organs if it is not treated immediately. Surfactant production in the fetus begins at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation and by 35th weeks of gestation most babies have developed adequate amount of surfactant. Most of the cases of RDS occur in babies born before 37 weeks of gestation. What are the risk factors for development of neonatal respiratory distress syndrome? The most important risk factor is diabetes in mother. If mother has diabetes, there is hyperglycemia and there is passage of glucose to the baby but insulin cannot cross placenta and that's why exposure of glucose to baby leads to increased activation of beta cells of pancreas which release insulin and it leads to hyperinsulinemia in the baby and insulin decreases surfactant production and that's why due to lack of or inadequate surfactant the babies born to diabetic mother are more prone to neonatal RDS. The second risk factor is cesarean delivery or induction of labor before, before the baby is full term. Third risk factor is multiple pregnancy. The clinical features of RDS are Difficulty in breathing, the baby presents with nasal flaring, rapid shallow breathing, grunting sounds while breathing, retraction of ribs and sternum. All these features are showing the baby is in the respiratory distress. Bluish color of the skin and mucous membrane shows there is presence of cyanosis due to lack of oxygen. Diagnosis of neonatal RDS is based on Clinical features of respiratory distress in a premature baby, history of diabetes in a mother, chest x-ray showing ground glass appearance to the lungs which is typical of the disease and this often develops 6 to 12 hours after birth. 
arterial blood gas analysis showing decreased partial pressure of oxygen and increased partial pressure of carbon dioxide so all these findings support the diagnosis of respiratory distress syndrome treatment it includes surfactant replacement therapy and breathing support from a ventilator or nasal continuous positive airway pressure machine can neonatal IDS be prevented? Yes. By preventing premature birth can help prevent neonatal IDS. Good prenatal care and regular checkups are required. Proper timing of a cesarean delivery. Amniocentesis that is collection of amniotic fluid for analysis. LS ratio to check the readiness of the baby's lung. Fetal lung maturity is assessed by measuring lecithin sphingomyelin ratio in the amniotic fluid. This LS ratio at 34 weeks of gestation is 1 is to 1. At term, it is more than 2 is to 1. At, and in preterm, it is 1 or less than 1. And if it is 1 or less than 1, it indicates respiratory distress. During pregnancy, corticosteroids can be given and they may help speed up lung maturity in the developing baby.